your Darley LDMBC compressed air foam pump anodes are very easily serviced here at the passenger side of the pump panel. The first thing we'll need to do is to remove the number three discharge uh, extension elbow and the six inch suction cap and then we can visibly look inside the pump to check the condition of the anodes. So as I was saying, the first thing we're going to do is remove the six inch chrome plated suction cap, set it here on the running board off to the side. You'll then need a needle nose pliers or some type of pliers to get a hold of the screen. Reach inside of here, grab a hold of the screen firmly, give it a jerk, tug it out of position. You can set that down as well. And now what we're going to need is a flashlight to look inside the suction extension. Turn the flashlight on here. When you're looking inside this suction extension, what you hope to see is an anode that looks something like what you're being shown here. This anode is in good condition and does not need replacement. If that anode were severely worn down or completely gone, you would need to remove the anode. And you do so by getting underneath the pump into that suction flange with a 1 and 1 16th inch socket and a ratchet and you can back out that anode for replacement. And I'll show you how to do that here now. Once underneath the vehicle you can see the running board here to give you a reference as to where I am. This is the running board where I was just working above. The main suction extension is located right here and the main suction extension feeds into the pump and there's a, an 8 bolt flange. This 8 bolt flange here has the anode. You can see the anode here coming through the end of this uh, 8 bolt Darley flange. Using that 1 and 1 16th inch socket with a um, half inch drive ratchet we can easily remove this anode uh, for replacement. I now have the, the socket and the ratchet on the anode and I can begin to remove it by going counterclockwise with the anode head. Keep in mind this anode is in a recessed location and towards the, uh, the end of the removal when you get to that last thread you'll want to slide off to the side because there is a good chance that there will be some water remaining in that cavity. Sorry, we got it finger loose now. I can simply take and remove the anode by hand. So as I mentioned before, this anode is in great shape, as it should be. The pump is brand new. Uh, what I will be doing is putting on some white Teflon thread tape. Uh, it's some uh, half inch wide thread tape. We'll put this thread tape back onto these threads and uh, put that anode back into position and tighten it back up. So now when installing thread tape, you always like to start here with the wrap starting on the bottom. And you want to roll it around and get full coverage onto your threads. If you were working into an area where you want to avoid getting any of the Teflon tape inside of the, the, um, the plumbing or whatever you're working on, you would want to skip that first thread so that to keep the Teflon tape from ending up inside the uh, product, but we'll just cover the threads here with thread tape, make a good three full revolutions, and then rip it off. You always want to go in this direction so that as you're threading that anode into the pump, the thread tape stays onto the threads. Now we're ready to reinstall it into the pump. Alright, so now we'll go and we'll reinstall this seemingly new anode 
into the same valve flange location. Tighten it up by hand here to start with. Turn our ratchet into the installation position. And tighten it up, installing that new anode into that valve flange. We don't have an exact torque spec, you got to kind of use some common sense here as we are installing brass into cast iron and usually about, if I had to guess, I'd say between 20, 20 and 25 foot-pounds of torque and you'll notice that we've got just a maybe, maybe one thread left um, before it's bottomed right out into that flange. So you want to make sure you do not bottom the anode directly into that um, into that casting into that cast iron flange there should be a good thread left like I say about 20 maybe 25 foot pounds of torque and there now you've uh, replaced your suction side anode and once that anode is back in place you can then take and reinstall your suction screen Press it in there. You put your suction cap back on. And make sure it's good and tight before you head on down the road. Now we'll do the, uh, the discharge side pump anode here next. And it is located inside the pump compartment here on the discharge extension that feeds this number three discharge. The easiest way to help you identify with where this discharge side anode is, is to show you here inside the pump compartment. If you look just beyond the Foam Pro pump onto the discharge extension, you can just get a good glimpse of that anode there, that hex head um, white anode. There it is right there in the center of the frame. That's that same 1 and 1 16th inch head. We've painted it white for easier identification. That is the end of the anode and it's mounted onto a 4 bolt flange on top of the Darley discharge head extension that feeds this right side discharge. Now the way that we check the condition of that anode is first of all we need to remove this chrome discharge extension and then open the discharge valve and then we could look inside with a flashlight. And now we'll do just that. I've got these already kind of loosened up. You might need a spanner wrench if they've been tightened onto your vehicle, but you go ahead and loosen up that discharge extension. And then uh, we'll go around the other side and open up the discharge valve and grab a flashlight. Now obviously we can only do this with the pump disengaged and shut off no pressure in the pump so when we open this discharge valve that'll open that valve completely on the other side so we can shine our flashlight in and get a good view as to the condition of the anode but again obviously you can only do this when the pump is disengaged when you're sitting in the station alright I have the camera set up now shooting down inside the Darley valve and you can see inside there the anode it's in pretty good condition again as it is brand new right now so see if we can zoom in there a little bit better. It's kind of hard to get a really good shot of the anode that's inside of there, but they're about uh, nearly four inches long when they're new. They're made out of magnesium, and they are a metal that is a sacrificial metal in that that it is uh, more severely, more quickly attacked by corrosion than any of the other materials of your pump. So it's very important that you replace these anodes on a regular basis to help prevent any corrosion of the you know the important parts of your pump these anodes are put in there to um, to be the component that requires replacement probably at least every year or so so now we'll show you how to get at that anode and how to replace this one as well I've found that the easiest way to replace this anode 
is to go in on this passenger side pump panel, go down over the top of the ladders here, alongside the cables between between the uh, or behind this two and a half inch stainless steel feed pipe and up over top of the anode here. So again, my hand is is over here underneath the stainless steel manifold on the back side of this two and a half inch stainless steel feed pipe and then you can drop down onto the anode from above here. And then you can start to uh, work the ratchet with a pretty good, uh, pretty good angled attack. And once you have that anode pretty well loosened up, you can then lay your ratchet off to the side here inside the pump compartment and reach around that same area and get in here and get a hold of the actual anode remove it the rest of the way by hand there we go and you can pull the anode out and again, this one's in very nice condition because like I said before, it is rather new. So there you can see the condition of the discharge side anode. And again, it was accessed by just looking inside your discharge extension. You get a light in there and you can pretty easily see what kind of condition that anode is in without actually having to go so far as to remove it. But I wanted to show you that it is physically possible to remove that anode from the vehicle using just a ratchet and a socket and uh, within just a few minutes. Alright, I've recoated the anode as you can see here with thread tape. Now we can go ahead and reinstall it into that 4 bolt Darley discharge flange on the top of this discharge extension. We'll start to get the thread started here. And then I'll finish up with my ratchet. And the same torque applies here. You want to just make sure it's got a good, secure, tight feeling to it. About 20 to 25 foot-pounds of torque is all you need. That feels pretty good. And then uh, once the anode is installed, I do highly recommend that you fire up the pump, put the pump in gear, run the pump up to about 100 PSI, and just ensure that you don't have any leaks. And uh, that's about it. In probably less than five minutes, you've just replaced both of your Darley pump anodes, the one on the discharge side that you can see here as well as the one on the suction side. And again, depending upon your water conditions, this may be required, you know, at least maybe once every year. We'll finish up by closing down our number three discharge valve and putting on our discharge chrome downspout on the other side. back in business.